Hello everyone, my name is Farsight, and today I will show you how to create your own scenario, edit existing scenarios, and upload said scenarios to the Steam Workshop, all using the Forgotten Construction set. That being said, we're going to go ahead, and here we are on the Kenshi Library page, click on Play, and then click on Launch Game Editor. This is going to go ahead and uh, open up the Forgotten Construction set, and here you can... Here on the top files here are going to be the main game data files, so let's go ahead and make sure all those are checked. The bottom half is going to represent mods. Uh, you might have some here, you might not, but if you do, let's go ahead and uncheck them. Now let's go ahead and click on create new mod file. I would recommend naming your mod uh, within the same realm or concept of the idea of the custom scenario you have in mind, if that makes sense. Here I named mine a man on the run one just because I already invented a man on the run in a previous video that did not render very properly. Let's go ahead and make sure it's checked and then hit done. All right, here we are with the main data world, or excuse me, the main game world window here. There are several trees on the side where we can edit pretty much most, if not everything, in Kenshi. That being said, let's go ahead and start in the Characters window. This is where we're actually going to edit an existing character just for the time being to make the process a little easier. Specifically, the Naked Dude from the Rock Bottom scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and search up Naked Dude. And here, let's go ahead and double click on him. Alright, and here we have his entire data window. Now, if you want to go ahead and edit an existing character just like this, then we'll go ahead and edit him here, uh, a process which you will see shortly, but we're going to go ahead and duplicate him so we can actually create our own character. Alright, we're going to go ahead and let, uh, excuse me, right click on him and hit duplicate. Now we have a copy of the Naked Dude, just so we don't edit pre-existing game files and scenario characters, we'll go ahead and create our own custom one. You can see there's quite a bit of stuff here on the left. Uh, let's go ahead and ignore that for now. It's nothing too important, at least not for the time being. Let's go ahead and rename the character to something that'll fit us, like Man on the Run. Now, my idea for this character is going to be a rogue fugitive who's going to have a uh, not so good standing with other places like the United Cities, and I also want to be an ex-slave. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom, and under type, I'm going to find slave, hit the drop down, and hit ex-slave. Now, as you can see here, just like the naked dude, he starts with a left arm missing. We're going to go ahead and right click it and remove from the list. Let's go ahead and hit this drop down window up here where we can go ahead and interact with several things that we will spawn on our character. Going alphabetically, let's start with backpack. All right, let's hit add real quick and you can see that we're going to have all options of the backpacks throughout the world of Kenshi. If you want one, like the small thieves, simply double click on it. The first number is going to represent the quantity and I believe the second number is going to be the percentage chance of having it. If you're not sure, then just check the bottom. We're going to go ahead and scroll down, hit clothing, and hit add. As I said before, I want to be a slave character, so I'm going to go ahead and start myself off with some a, uh, dyed trousers that most of the slaves wear by double clicking on it and adding it, and then I'm also going to give myself prisoner shackles. Moving on is actually going to be the inventory. Now, if I recall correctly, I don't actually add anything uh, to my inventory, but just know that you click on it and open it up, just like all the other windows that we've seen. Now there, I just clicked on the faction, which is the faction we belong to, and I don't want to belong to a particular one, so let's move to race. This is actually where you can specify what race the character is, uh, simply by hitting add and choosing the race. However, if you want to force a race that you cannot choose anything else, we'll go ahead and do that later. For now, let's go ahead and hit starting health, and here you can see that we can affect all our body parts within our body. Uh, for example, the left arm, the chest, the head, the foreleg. Uh, we'll go ahead and double click on it, and actually the number is going to represent what the damage will be. In that case, I put a head as zero, and the zero is basically going to mean that my health is going to start with zero on my head. Under the stats window, we can go ahead and edit our stats that we begin with. If I recall correctly, you start with uh, just the standard one stat. Otherwise, if you choose something and you don't know what it does, simply double click on it and you can see all of it right here. 
Now to make things a little interesting for me, rather than just starting with one, I'm gonna hit the stats randomize under the levels category on the left hand side and put in a value of five. This means either positively or negatively, all of my stats will be randomly edited with a value of five just to make things a little more complicated. Maybe I'll have a minus five to stealth, maybe I'll have a plus four to robotics, we will see. When we're done, let's go ahead and hit the X window and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the factions here, and we're actually going to expand it and hit squads. This way we put our character into a squad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue editing the rock bottom scenario as we did with the naked guy who belongs to rock bottom. Let's go ahead and edit it again by typing it in and hitting start rock bottom for the squad. Now this is essentially where we're going to put all of the characters that we created or in my case just a single character. Now let's go ahead and duplicate it just so we don't edit an existing one, though if you want to do that, just simply double click it and not change anything. Let's go ahead and change the name. I like to leave the start and the hyphen there just for continuity since the rest of the vanilla files are named like that with a start hyphen. Uh, in this case, mine is going to be a man on the run. Now as you can see here, the leader of the squad is the naked dude, uh, the aforementioned one who we duplicated. So let's go ahead and delete him and instead put our new character in. Gonna hit the drop down window here and scroll down till we find leader. We'll hit add and let's go ahead and search up our character, which is a man on the run. Now, if you want to edit him, all you need to do is double click on it. We don't need to go back to the characters menu. And as you can see here, we have everything we need to interact with him. On the left hand here, we really don't have to edit anything here. This is basically just going to represent the uh, squad itself. But if we really want to edit anything, let's just stick with in, uh, editing individual teammates. As you can see here, we have quite a bit of things to interact with. But once again, I'm going to go ahead and leave them blank. We'll go ahead and hit the X button here and we'll go ahead and move on to the game start section. Now here's where all the vanilla game starts are. If you want to edit anything, simply double click on any of them and you can edit it there. As you can see, we can edit anything we like within the start rock bottom. This is just the vanilla one and we can double click on all the characters and edit them as we so choose. Say you want to be a little save scummy and have the rock bottom start with 8,000 cats, you simply do so right here in this window. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and right click and hit new item, which is going to open up the new game world uh, game start window for us. As you can see, it's named new game start off. But before we worry about that, let's go ahead and add our squad in. Here it is, start hyphen man on the run. Simply hit it and hit OK or double click on it. Same thing as before, if you need to edit anything, you don't need to go back to the characters or squad window, just double click on it. Let's go ahead and change the name. This is actually going to be the name that will be shown within the Game Starts menu on Kenshi itself. So let's go ahead and name it something quite nice like Man on the Run. Here we can add a description or a little bit of background or lore to anything. And if that little window is too small, simply hit that button at the end to type in a more fully fledged description. For this case, I'm just going to put in test just so we can see if it appears at all. Difficulty, you can of course change the difficulty around. This is going to be a pretty tough scenario, I say. And we're going to go ahead and change our money amount. In this case, we're only going to spawn with 10 cats and we can choose the style of game this is going to be. In my case, I'm going to type in RPG Fugitive. Now, as I said before, I am a man on the run who is wanted, so I'm actually going to hit that drop down window there and hit Faction Relations. And here you can see most of the factions, if not all of them, in the game. We can also positively or negatively influence what they think of our characters outright. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make the United Cities not like me. I'm going to change it to something pretty brutal, like a negative 30, just to really emphasize the fugitive playstyle, and it'll make things quite interesting while I'm running around. Here you can also edit if you want to add a positive reputation on any characters, in this case the Hounds, because I plan on starting in the Swamp, you simply hit the zero with whatever faction and add a positive number, in my case, five. 
Now let's go ahead and see the force race button here. This is actually where you're going to be uh, interacting with the menu here to force a race. For example, I want everyone to force race themselves as a skeleton and they won't have the option to be anything else. Let's go ahead and hit town and then hit add. This will specify where we're going to spawn because I'm going to be in the swamps and away from the United Cities. I'm going to go ahead and put in rot. You can also change research here. Uh, you can go ahead and choose what research you do and do not already have. Uh, this is great for building play styles if you don't want to go about the research and just want to start hauling away the materials you need to really start building a lot of stuff. Once we're done, let's go ahead and hit the X button and then let's go ahead and save our work right here and then close the forgotten construction set. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into Kenshi itself and let's see what happens. Now, in the intro screen of Kenshi, you're going to see there's the little mod startup page. Let's go ahead and hit the mods tab and make sure that the new scenario we created is in fact checked. If it is, let's go ahead and hit OK and let's get into Kenshi itself. Alright, here we are in the main screen. Let's go ahead and hit new game and let's see if we can actually find our character here. Alright, here it is. Man on the run, difficulty hard, cash 10, playstyle RPG fugitive, and as you can see, I simply put the description as test, which is a pretty good sign as this is everything I inputted myself, and hopefully you should be seeing the same thing as well. Let's go ahead and hit begin, and let's see if we spawn in with everything that we have given ourselves. Alright, here we are in the character editor here. As you can see, we have actually spawned as a skeleton, which is fantastic because that is the race I forced myself. And you can see that we actually have the backpack that I have chosen, as well as the dyed trousers and the prisoner shackles. You can also see that the character name, A Man on the Run 1, is here. Let's go ahead and hit confirm and see if we spawn in the swamp. That which we in fact do. Let's also go ahead and check the map here as well. I apologize if the game is a little laggy, it is still loading in. Let's zoom in and good, here we are in Rot itself. If we check our Factions tab, we can also see that I have a negative 30 to the United Cities and a positive 5 to the Hounds, all of which I inputted. You can also see that I have the Escape Slave debuff, and checking the inventory, we have everything that we needed. Now I didn't add anything to my inventory, but if you did add anything, it should be right there for you and waiting for you. You can also see my stats are all positively and negatively effective by a value of 5, all completely random. So as you can see in my science trades ranged pretty much everything. I have quite a bit of text uh, stats on me, I should say. Uh, this should definitely pose as a difficult play style, but nonetheless a very fun play style. That being said, I'm pretty happy with how everything came out. So I'm ready to play the game and test it out to see if it is worthwhile. All right, I'm pretty happy with what we found uh, with sir. I'm pretty happy with what I played, and I think I'm ready to go ahead and upload it. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Forgotten Construction set once again. And let's go ahead and make sure all the main game data files are selected, and let's uncheck any other files except for the one that we created. We're going to go ahead and hit Done, just like we did before, very simple. And actually, we're going to go ahead and hit Steam Workshop. Here we'll have the Steam Workshop file. You can go ahead and give your mod a title, in this case, Man on the Run. And you can also put the author, in my case, Farsight, of course. You can change the version. Uh, we're just going to leave it at version 1, but later down the line, if you make any edits, all you need to do is open it and hit Steam Workshop again, and we can name it version 2. You can even put preview images, change notes, and tags as well, but we're just going to go ahead and hit Upload. Once it is uploaded, it'll simply say Connected or Success. Let's go ahead and close the Forgotten Construction set, and let's see if it appears in the workshop. Awesome, here we are. I had a little bit of trouble, I think my internet had a little bit of a hiccup, which I apologize, but if you filled in all the data that you filled in within the mod profile, then everything will appear right here, completely yours and ready to be edited. I'm going to delete mine as it was only a demonstration, but you can also see my other scenario that I created. Otherwise, I believe that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please comment below. Otherwise, thank you so much. My name is Farsight, and I hope to see you again next time.